Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to part number 2 of my Havana Cuba travel guide. If you haven't seen part number 1 of this video, I will leave the link below, but for now stay here because today I'm going to be showing you the beautiful city of Havana. We will explore some of the main attractions of the city and I will give you lots of information about Cuba so you can get a better idea of what to expect if you're planning to visit Cuba in the near future. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos because if you like traveling, then I'm sure you will enjoy my other videos. Thanks for watching and welcome to Cuba. So right now I am in Old Havana, this is the historic side of the city and it's a beautiful place with a lot of beautiful buildings. La Habana Vieja, also known as Old Havana, is the original part of the city and this is where the Spanish started building the city in 1519, which is over 500 years ago. Now on my previous videos, some people were saying that I was only showing the beautiful part of Cuba and that my videos were misleading. They were kind of angry that I was only showing the beautiful parts. Now look, there is plenty of negative information about Cuba. There is plenty of videos that show the poor side and the ugly parts, but I didn't want to do that because I think Cuba deserves some credit. This is a beautiful destination and honestly it's become one of my favorite countries in the world and I wanted to show that side of Cuba, I didn't want to focus on the bad side. I mean there is a reason why this place is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is one of the most beautiful cities in the Caribbean and it is a destination that I highly recommend that you visit. Now back to Old Havana. This is the area where you will find most restaurants, bars, cafes and art galleries. It's also very common to see street performers and random groups playing music and dancing all over the place. This is also a very busy residential area that has the second highest population density in Havana with around 100,000 inhabitants in a very small place. So behind me, as you can see, is El Capitolio de La Habana. This is one of the most emblematic buildings here in Cuba. It reminds me a little bit of the Capitol in Washington, D.C., but I think this one is a little bit bigger than the one in Washington. El Capitolio, or the National Capitol Building, was built from 1926 to 1929. This is probably the symbol of the city and is located right next to my favorite building, which is El Gran Teatro de La Habana. This theater is home to the Cuban National Ballet and it was built in 1914. Its facilities include theaters, a concert hall, conference rooms, an art gallery, and several rehearsal halls for dance companies. It also hosts the International Ballet Festival of Havana every two years since 1960. The weather in Havana is kind of like a beach weather, it's pretty warm, so if you come here just bring like tank tops or very very uh, light uh, garments because here it gets pretty hot during the day. We came in April, so it depends what day to come. Uh, I think in May and June starts getting very very hot, but right now in April the weather is actually very nice and it's been beautiful except during the day, like around 2 or 3 p.m., it gets very hot. So the official currency of Cuba is the Cuban peso. In the past, there used to be two currencies. There used to be the CUC, or the CUC, and the Cuban peso. But the other currency disappeared, is no longer available, so you only have the Cuban peso. And before we came here, the airline told us that the US dollar was banned. 
So they told us not to bring dollars, but that's a lie. That's a lie because most of the time people here ask for dollars. So here you want to bring euros or dollars. Don't bring Canadian dollars or Mexican pesos. Well, you can and you can exchange them, but it's better for the exchange rate to bring dollars. And it's not forbidden. I saw before here that the US dollar was forbidden, but that's not true. That's actually the main currency that we paid in. So most of you might be wondering about the safety here. I felt safe all the time I feel like this is a safe place I've never felt unsafe and I've never felt like people want to take advantage of me so you know they try to take advantage of you as a tourist and they want to overcharge you but they will never rob you you know I've never felt unsafe I feel like this is a safe destination also this is a very popular destination I have found quite a lot of tourists around Havana so this is definitely a popular destination for Canadians Mexicans and Europeans. I found quite a lot of Canadians here. So I'm gonna talk about the prices here. This is not a cheap destination, let me tell you. If you think you buy cheap, you are wrong. This place is actually uh, pretty expensive when it comes to food, at least what we have experienced so far. Oh my God, we've spent so much money so far in taxis and food. Finding good places to eat in Havana can be a little bit challenging. So before I went to Cuba, I made some research and I found some really, really good restaurants. So if you're a foodie and you want to know where to find the best places to eat in Havana, then I suggest you check out my video about the best restaurants in Havana. There I will show you the places where you will find the most delicious food in town. Yes, there are some really good restaurants in Havana. The only thing is that they can be a little bit pricey because according to locals, getting certain ingredients can be really hard in Cuba. So that's why restaurants charge a lot of money because it's not easy to find some ingredients. So right now I am in El Hotel Nacional de Cuba, which is a very, very important landmark that you have to visit while you are in Havana. This is a hotel and it's a very old hotel and it used to be one of the most expensive and luxurious places in La Habana. Actually, yesterday we were here and a lot of celebrities and presidents and very important people have stayed here. It's very nice, it's very beautiful inside and it's a place that I highly recommend to visit. Before coming here, I thought that in Cuba, internet was going to be an issue because, I don't know, I had the idea that in Cuba, there was no internet, that there was like a restriction and the government was very strict with the internet, but apparently it's not. Things have changed a lot here in Cuba. I'm very shocked, like you can find internet pretty much everywhere and yes it's a little bit different like it's not completely open you have to ask for the password or sometimes they charge you for the internet but they will be wi-fi pretty much everywhere you go also yesterday we were here uh in the lobby and there was a guy that was helping us to get a taxi and i was seeing that he was on his phone and he was like on facebook or something and i was like excuse me do you have internet on your phones like always and he said that in Cuba, Cubans have internet on their phones. Like, they have internet. Like, you know, they have internet on their phones. Also, when we went in the airport and we took a taxi to get to the city, the taxi driver had a GPS. Like, things have changed a lot. Or maybe I was living on a rock, I don't know. But I thought the internet was gonna be an issue for us. So if that's something that concerns you, definitely don't. Things have changed quite a lot here in Cuba. So it got pretty warm and we decided to come to this hotel. If you are in Old Havana, I recommend you come here and chill. Uh, this hotel has a very nice view. You don't have to be a guest to come up here. You can just come here for a drink and relax and it's a very nice place. It's very quiet. I don't know about you guys, but I really love rooftops because I can appreciate the city, you know, how it's like. I can also see some landmarks, for example, in this case, the capital. 
and relax just take in all the beauty and everything that I've seen La Habana is quite a lot so I needed some peace and quiet because we were wandering around all Havana and the energy is so intense it's so much by the way something very important is that in Cuba if you have American Express I have American Express and we cannot use that card here that card is pretty much forbidden you cannot use American Express so you see when you travel I feel like if you do your research you will be able to find very nice places like this one I mean there are nice restaurants there are beautiful rooftops there are nice places before I came here I made sure that I knew where I was gonna go you know I suggest when you travel uh, you use Google Maps Google Maps is my best friend I always use it because that's how I know which places I want to go to I mark them on my map you can actually save a map of a city so that you don't need internet while you're traveling but you can still have the map and because it's a GPS uh, the phone will always know where you are so you can actually you know explore the city with your map on your hand and it will always work even though you don't have internet uh, that way you are not gonna get lost and that way you'll be able to see all the landmarks that you wanted to see so now we're gonna try the most typical drink you can have in Cuba which is mojito mojito is very typical here and it has sugar ron um, I think it's mint and lemon I think I'm not quite sure but this is very typical mmm que rico So La Habana is supposed to have a very good nightlife scene, however on this trip I didn't really go out clubbing or partying, but I did go to this show called Tropicana that I highly recommend. If you're visiting Cuba, I think it's a must. It costs $90 and it starts at 10 p.m. Something you have to know is that travel insurance is mandatory when you are traveling to Cuba. However, when I got to the airport, no one asked me for a travel insurance. So I don't know if it's really mandatory, but I don't think you want to travel without travel insurance because, well, things can happen, you know. So you don't want to risk it because you can get sick, your luggage can get lost or a lot of things can happen. So it doesn't matter where you are traveling, I suggest you purchase a travel insurance. I recommend a company called Travelix. They have insurance for pretty much every country. So if you're traveling to Europe, Asia or anywhere really, uh, check them out. I have a link in the description box of my video. However, you can use any company of your choice. But please, please, please do not travel without travel insurance. So as you can see, Havana is a beautiful city with lots of history, beautiful architecture and beautiful people. It's honestly one of my favorite cities in the world. And if you're curious to see how it's like, or if you're planning a trip to Cuba, I hope this video helped you out. Did you like this video? If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, remember that if you'd like to support me or support my work, the easiest way is with a super thanks which is a little hard right next to the thumbs up button 
your contributions mean so much to me. Again, thank you so much for watching till the end and I will see you guys on my next video. Adios.